Hey, welcome to Writers Talking TV, brought to you by the Writers Guild of Canada. I'm Anthony Q. Farrell, a screenwriter who is currently uh, showrunning a few series. Guys, don't worry about me. It's not about me. Tonight, we will be talking about Tall Boys, which just launched its second season on February 6th. The series, um, it burst onto CBC in the fall of 2019, immediately putting a new twist on sketch comedy, tackling issues of racism, sexism, toxic masculinity, power, privilege, while creating some of the funniest sketches ever to grace Canadian TV. So I'll be speaking with the show's four co-creators, writers and stars, Gulid Abdi, Vance Banzo, Tim Blair, and Franco Nguyen. New Franco. And uh, we'll be discussing all kinds of stuff. You know, representation uh, in writers' rooms, uh, talking about season one to season two, to working with Bruce McCullough. We're going to talk about a bunch of different things. We'll be chatting for 45 minutes um, with just my personal questions, things that I need to know. And then we'll get some uh, questions from all of you after after that for about 20 minutes or so. Just type your queries into the old, the QA box on your screen, the Q&A box. Um, but before we get into all of that, uh, I thought we'd warm up with a little look at Tall Boys season two. Roll the tape, me. One hundred percent. Pure Colombian. Give Papa a taste. Ten thousand dollars, cash. Freeze! You're all under arrest for breaking social distancing guidelines. Why don't you use the designated drug deal area we've created? We're in the same bubble. Yeah, I've heard that before. This is a tier one friend party. Tier one? So I'm in the second tier. <laughs> no, you're ninth. Ninth? Holy shit. Oh. I thought it'd be like Indiana Jones, but without the racism. But it's just the racism. Racism? Why is it always racism? I've been altering your books to be more inclusive. Raja Hood? Shamika's Web? Consent Dracula? Why didn't you just buy you books made by people of color? You don't think I tried? Closest I got was a catalog about the Nagano Olympics. It's all Guinness Book of Records. You keep hearing the same scratching noises. It sounds like you're dealing with a DJ infestation. Everybody get cook 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 tonight! I can snap his neck, gas the place, or my personal favorite. Chainsaw. You cannot do that. He is a person. Oh, no, no. He's a DJ. They just look like people. It's a survival tactic. One of you is gonna hold my baby. Or I'm gonna make you hold my baby. Well, how are you gonna make us do that? I'm gonna throw my firstborn son in the air, and one of you is gonna catch him. Guys who can dance are good at sex. It's true. Guys who can dance are yeah. good at sex. For real. Is this all you're gonna do? Pretty much. Don't let my cat out when you leave. We will never change. We are emo. Let's get some flames burn. Yeah. When I say big, y'all say bigger, big, bigger, big, bigger. When I say nig, y'all say nigga, nig, nigga, nig, nigga. Well, who said that? Nigga, nigga, nigga. Wow, I came here to make a terrorist demand not to be subjected to this. What'd I say? What'd I say? What'd I say? You're tall. Yeah, thanks. It wasn't a compliment. That was weird, right? I thought it was pretty good. <laughs> yeah. That was madness. <laughs> it was, honestly. Good promotion. Uh, that's the first time you guys seen that? Yeah. Yeah, first yeah. time. I've never seen it. Yeah. I was enjoying like, it. <laughs> I was like, oh, like some of these sketches I'm, I'm seeing for the first time. I'm like, oh, sick. That's how it came out. Nice. <laughs> that was the first time I looked away from my own window box. I usually look at myself when I get on these Skype. Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> That's true, yeah. Like, oh, I'm handsome. 
<laughs> Y'all are lucky to be hanging with me. Uh, so let, <laughs> let's get into let's get into this. Let's uh, let's find out. My, okay, so uh, my first question. I am big on representation in TV. One of the things that I moved back to Canada to really work on, especially in the comedy scene uh, on TV. So my first question for you guys is, like, the difficulties you face convincing white showrunners, white producers that the POV in your sketches that you pitch, that they're relatable, that they're worthy enough to make it an air. Like, like run down some of the things that have been like, maybe a little difficult or like, I was gonna say maybe they're easy, but I know I know better than that. Uh, so why don't you guys talk a little bit about that to start off with? Because you are in a unique position for, for sketch shows uh, in Canada where, you know, four BIPOC men are just uh, killing it in the scene. Yeah, I mean, like I, I feel like coming from stage, like we a lot of times we just did things that made us laugh, and so at stage, like we could take risks, and if something bombed, like we would just try to fix it or be like, all right, we won't see those people again, so the, <laughs> we don't, <laughs> we're safe, you know. Uh, but for TV, I know that like, especially when it comes to like topics like when we're trying to discuss race, it's something I think we're still figuring out as we grow as people as well um especially with like you know like the the resurgence of the blm movement last year i'm like i got a, I got a lot of catching up to do on all of history um and <laughs> i don't know where the jokes are quite yet but i will find them once i once i read enough i will find them uh so i don't know if it we haven't gotten a ton of pushback but when we're trying to do like these sketches that are related to race, something that's touchy, we do uh, we do try to be like very delicate with it. And I think CBC has been like, I get it. Like, you know, either telling us they don't get it or or just telling us that like, oh, okay, yeah, like a, just maybe explain this premise a little clearer. Yeah, and sometimes on the flip side, it's like just sometimes uh, if something is talking about race, sometimes it feels like really sexy and it's like, every, oh, this is, this is going to be hot. It's going to get the views. And uh, the challenge is that like one day we might write something uh, about race or something, uh, something else that's challenging to us. And then the next day we learn something new about that particular subject. And it's like, man, I don't know if this sketch is funny now that I know all sides of this. I don't know if it's relevant anymore. Uh, and sometimes it's like, okay, we have to, really kind of push back into like hey let's we, we i know there are production logistical things that are set in motion right now but we feel like this can't be in the show right now just because it feels weird mm -hmm. uh so yeah sometimes that's like the, kind of the challenge too because we like we recognize the uh the like just from our own stuff like we always try to write from a place of fun uh and also be true to our own like integrity whatever there is of it whatever we could find and muster up uh <laughs> but yeah on the day. yeah the, <laughs> we're pretty good on tuesdays yeah. <laughs> uh question based on that like you talked a little bit you talked a little bit about your point of view and just kind of pitching that they don't understand when you hit those like little obstacles or roadblocks there's a decision you kind of have to make as a writer do you you have to either push through or drop it and figure something else out um, are there any times that you guys like have pushed through and felt like I'm glad I did because otherwise we wouldn't have this this one sketch? Uh, yeah, definitely. There was one we were working on for a while uh, it, from the first season, uh, the ghost tour one, where Guled is a, uh, a a a ghost who's a slave or mistaken for a slave, uh, and that one uh, took us a while to like really whip into shape. Like originally, like we we. You see this? Damn. This is, I, I did not mean that. Uh, not intended, please. Um, now this this conversation is all about learning, but also unlearning. Yeah. Uh, but it it, uh, it began as uh, it stemmed from the idea of like there's lots of like ghost tours that you see around the city about like horrible incidents that happened in the past. But uh, like you know, for example, I'm, like in Toronto, you can go to Center Island and take a ghost tour. But all these like uh, tr like tragic moments never to seem about people of color who have really faced like some horrendous turmoils, uh, you know, and I think that's where we wanted to explore. 
and it it took like a lot of iterations and just like talking it over between ourselves to to find what we liked about it and like present it in in a good sketch way do you get those blank stares from the white people you're pitching ideas to the when they just kind of like i don't i don't know how to respond to this <laughs> i mean sometimes yeah like but also i find like it's so uh, I think the hardest part is like, if I don't understand what I'm trying to say, then it's so much harder to get them on board. Yeah. And a lot of times when it, when it is something like, even as simple as ghost tour was like, but they touched on so many different things that we were like trying to figure out, okay, what are we actually trying to say with this? So once, like, once you have clarity idea, it's a little easier, but it, it would be helpful. Uh, if, you know, um, uh, from the first jump, the idea was like, if someone was like, yeah, no, I get where you're going. Let me lead you that way. Yeah. Um, uh, Vance, I feel like you should, you want to say stuff. I, I, I feel like I'm cutting you off. Did you want to jump in here? I have a question. For I was you. actually thinking about just uh, switching off my video and enjoying. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just, uh, I'm just enjoying the conversation. That's all I'm saying. I actually do have a question. You can start with this. You can start um, answering this, man. But I, my personally, like when I put, like when stuff goes up on TV, like my relatives, my close friends are my biggest critics. So they're the ones who are just kind of like, yeah, you are right. Like they're, <laughs> how are do you guys because you guys have done some great stuff and for for many fantastic reasons you guys are blowing up all around the country and this is like i'm i couldn't be happier about all that but i know y'all are probably dealing with members of your community who are kind of like yeah you didn't do this like is that <laughs> does that does that happen to you vance like when you, you you're talking to like friends and family they're kind of like uh i wish you did this instead of that and you have to like you have to kind of like be like, listen, this is, it's a television show. This It's not just me. It's yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, well, yeah, um, I got pretty supportive group around me. Like, like I'm needlessly arrogant. Like I can do anything. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> no. Um, uh, yeah. I mean, like firstly, the closest person would be like uh, my brother watching the show and he'd be like, oh, why didn't you go for this joke? Or why didn't you do this? Or, and it's just like, uh, maybe for like one reason or another or a million different ones like um, but like he's he's laughing though I mean like I see everyone who watches the show I, I know just is enjoying themselves and enjoying it uh, but I, I don't feel too much uh, criticism uh, thank god uh, that's probably because like my big demeanor and my baby face like those two combined like how could you do me wrong yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this will break him <laughs> and then he'll break but I him cuddle. Yeah. <laughs> what about the rest of you guys you guys have to deal with uh angry family members uh yeah there's 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 definitely been a couple of sketches that uh you know have i'll just say have not been my mom's favorite uh <laughs> but like my family's very supportive and i feel like uh, you know, and it's definitely something you can't focus on because I think we are in this like unique vantage point where, you know, just the makeup of our troop, we're pretty diverse. And like, I think sometimes you feel the pressure of representation on that. And I think like the best thing you can do is kind of forget that and just like truly express your like your, yourself as you are to the best extent. And, you know, that's what I try and focus on uh, and, and not so much... Uh, yeah, what what sketches my mom, you know, because also I'm, I'm not making comedy for my mom. I'd love to make my mom laugh. I I, I do, but I, I you know, uh, she's not my target demo. I'm sorry. Oh, wow, wow, you <laughs> say that on the internet. I write every joke for my mother. <laughs> she's gonna put some stuff in the chat real quick. <laughs> yeah, no, she's coming for me. <laughs> um, what about you guys? You guys want to? You guys have? You guys have horrible family members, or do you guys have nice family members? I have um what my, you, guys uh, you two there on my screen, uh Frank. <laughs> <laughs> All right here. Um I yeah, my my partner will be very honest about everything. Uh and she's like, Yeah, this is yeah, I get this one. Or sometimes she's like, Oh, this one's a really good one. Uh which is like helpful because like um I, I wanna yeah, sometimes you can get really academic in an approach uh with a sketch. Sometimes it can get a little bit heady. And, uh, you know, I'm not making comedy for nerds, man. I'm making comedy <laughs> for the jocks, all the cool kids. Um, yeah, and because sometimes uh, I do feel like this is a, like maybe a, I don't want to digress or anything, but I do feel like sometimes uh, certain lingo, lingo, and um, yeah, sir, sometimes discussions about uh, 
identity can be very inaccessible for a lot of people because you know not everyone has uh, a degree you know a fine arts degree or a university degree uh, so sometimes even if you know you have an MBA you might not necessarily have exposure to certain terminology that we're constantly uh, around because we're in like the comedy scene or an art scene or you know a film art scene they're all the same within the all arts but like uh, yeah sometimes it's very sometimes it can be you can be in your own bubble as well uh, so like that's I don't know like a real joy is when you can express something that you feel that like connects with people even uh, if they don't have like a PhD in identity politics do they get PhDs for that? Yeah, they I don't do. know. I'm they just do. making. Now it they do. They I do just now. started freestyling <laughs> at the end. He's done all kinds. Of, he's <laughs> done looking cool right there. Yes, 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 absolutely. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I got this back. I got this back. What about you, Gulid? You got angry family members? You got people? You gotta? You gotta? No, you gotta I mean, so far, like most of my like family members, like my siblings, and I come from like a huge family. My dad is like one of ten. And so I Damn. am also like one of eight. So it's like a big, it's a big family. Uh, but so far, like the people that have messaged me have been supportive and uh, people who haven't messaged me, I assume don't like this show. And I'm glad they <laughs> haven't messaged me. <laughs> You're like, just don't tell me anything. Yeah. Are, where are you? Where are you in the eight? Uh, I am, I think somewhere in the middle. I have like what Jesus three, four, <laughs> four younger, about the middle, you know? <laughs> Are you going to have six kids after and like keep digressing by two, like a reverse pyramid? I mean, I mean just something I, to consider. Oh, I'm... yeah. <laughs> the math jokes. You know, I have a, a minor in mathematics from Queens University. So oh. I, I got Whoa. It. <laughs> Get him. <laughs> I think also one thing in terms of like, you know, maybe a, a sketch your family might not like. I think the, the fun thing about doing a sketch show is that's like one sketch and then it's a mixed bag of nuts. We got another sketch coming right at you. You can something right up your alley like there's always something for everyone that's yeah. very true one of the things that um uh you guys probably aisha brown she talks about this in her stand-up being the first the first black woman the first there's a lot of a lot of great things about it but there's also a lot of pressure in it like so you guys being like the like the first troop of your kind to have a, a show on you know national canadian television i'm sure take you back to season one with um that pressure because here's the thing with like you know with people of with people of color a lot of times you have, you get opportunities. And if you're the first, if you don't do it right, no one else is coming after you because it's going to be 15 years before they'll trust another person of color with, with that job. If you're a bad, if you're a bad janitor, <laughs> you're 15 years before they let another person of color <laughs> grab that mop. So you got to represent. Well, did you guys feel any of that when you guys were doing season one and even into season two? Or, or are you just kind of like, you know what, we're just going to, Blinders on, we're just going to do what what uh, what we feel like is, is good comedy. Uh, yeah, I felt it, definitely. I mean, I'm familiar with the the whole Michelle, uh, more Michelle, Margaret Cho thing. I was like, man, I, I could be her. That could be me easily. Yeah. She's very talented, uh, you know, and, you know, that's what I'm saying. If you take anything away from this conversation, <laughs> Franco and Margaret Cho are on the same talent level. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, no, but like, yeah, definitely felt a lot of pressure. Uh, even if anyone was saying like, uh, you know, there's no pressure, you know, just do it, you know, keep it, it's whatever. It's it's very weird because then, you know, you even like scrolling through, I remember season one, it's growing through, uh, like getting to the gem app and then just scrolling through. I'm like, man, there's, we stand out and in a very flavorful way. And, uh, so yeah, definitely. Bannock don't yeah. have no flavor. So, <laughs> <laughs> Bannock don't have no flavor, but I got <laughs> <laughs> What about the rest of you guys? Did you guys, did you guys feel that? Or were you just kind of like, you know what? We got a TV show. We're going to, let's just make a show. Let's not worry about whatever, what everyone else is thinking. The, I, there definitely was pressure, but I think, yeah, the mindset was just try and, and have fun and like connect to what it was. And I think a big part of that was also just coming from doing it, doing live comedy really for no money and like just for fun, just ideas that we purely thought were fun and then brought them to stage to make people laugh and like getting zero cash for that. And then all of a sudden, you know, being paid to write way more comedy. Like I think that was just definitely added to the pressure of it and uh, but the thing is, like, I think we do our best work when we're having fun. So it was a balance of feeling that pressure, but like, yeah, not letting it affect us, affect us and 
reconnecting to what really made it fun in the first place. And like, like, uh, yeah, I, I think that was kind of the mindset. Yeah, like oh. I only felt for like one sketch last year, Somali grandma, or I did a sketch about my grandma. It was the first time I think I even mentioned I was Somali in the show. Uh, and that was the only time where I really did think about it. I was like, oh, shoot, uh, other Somali people are going to see this. And they did. And they, uh, unan- like, I want to say unanimously, but a lot of people did not like it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they thought you were too mean to your grandma. Yeah. And, and they weren't, and they, and they were right. Honestly, those moments where I was mean to my grandma, I was like, yeah, I can see. And it's like, also like, you know, like, I don't think it's unique to Somali culture, but you revere your grandparents, you know, and, uh, they are above reproach. You can't criticize them. Uh, so even <laughs> anything like being like, I only see them twice a year. It's like, how dare you? You know, people were, people were mad, mad about that. Not even the things I thought were more mean in the sketch. Yeah. The fact that I only saw my grandmother <laughs> in the sketch twice a year. Like, how can you do that? Twice a year to his grandmother? I was like, okay, okay. I didn't see that one. I didn't see that one. Coming. <laughs> what are you, Vance? Did you feel any pressure? Or are you just kind of like, uh, I, this is, uh, what I've always wanted to do. I remember a year before we even got the show, I was like, man, if I could write comedy and just do some, get some acting gates every once in a while, I'll be like the happiest pick and shit. Like I'll be just be so good. <laughs> and then, uh, when we got it, I just kind of, I was just like, I got to work my ass off. Like, this is what I wanted to do. I, now it's here. So I, I was just work at the I'd bullshit all day with the guys over at tall boys and we'd write some stuff and then i'd go home and i'd work till like past midnight just writing comedy because it's like my, my passion i love to do it i love to be meticulous about it so did feel pressure in that sense like this is what i want to do i don't want to let go of it i gotta work as hard as i can the um the trend the, the the switch from season one to season two like how do you guys feel <laughs> Sorry, my dog's going crazy upstairs. But how do you guys? How do you guys feel coming into season two? Like, uh oh, is it? Uh, Anthony, did the okay. dog unplug so- the internet? <laughs> I'm so used to my internet crapping. I was like, is it me? So I was looking at you guys, like someone else. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Anthony. The teacher's gone. <laughs> am, I, am I back? Am I back? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Back. yeah. Yeah. My dog unplugged my internet. Yes, that's right. <laughs> um, I was asking the what did what what changes did you guys make for season two to make it even more tall boys? Because for me, what I love about your show is when I see a sketch that I feel like no one else can do that sketch. That's when I'm like, okay, that's that's real tall boys right there. What did you guys? How did you guys come to season two to make that even more prevalent with your with your sketches? I mean, I feel like a big part of it was just like finding our sea legs of the first season of like, yeah, writing sketch specifically for television and then being on set. Like, I think we just came in a lot more confident and like had it like because up and up until that point, we had only written on stage and we were very confident in what we could do on stage. But uh, uh, yeah, so I think, yeah, that was like a big part of it. Yeah. Yeah, just trying to uh, yeah be very confident in having more fun. I think uh, before, uh, yeah, before we went into season two, we had a meeting and Bruce was like, just be unapologetic. And I was like, oh yeah, this is very helpful. Uh, sorry, we didn't do it the first season. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, and then I think that's, I mean, as much as I was saying, like I felt the pressure, it's like the, the way you should uh, do comedy is in a very playful way. And that's, just, I think we're just trying to revisit that feeling of play and fun and uh, and yeah that's pretty much it uh, to get yeah. like a to get like a show of like I don't know how many you guys do how many sketches you guys think you guys do per episode probably like I don't know, like seven eight, five six, six. yeah one or, one or two, or... One or two. <laughs> <laughs> but to get even to just do one show like how many sketches do you guys feel like you have to write to get just to like how many how many sketches are, are on the on the cutting room floor? Actually? Oh, so many, so I many. Know, I can't yeah. even count. It's it's yeah, we write over a hundred sketches, like a year or like Maybe last each. year we wrote. Yeah, last year we wrote like two hundred or some shit. Got some COVID. Can I swear? I can swear here. Yeah, I swear. Uh-huh. Yeah, <laughs> 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 fucking bullshit. Fucking shit. Yeah, but we wrote a lot. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, then you guys have a team. You guys and you guys have a. It's the four of you guys plus uh, a few other writers, and um, 
it's Bruce and anyone else, is there anyone else in the positions of like for, for season two, was there anyone else that you guys were, that was running the room? Uh, Jen Goodhue was helping it, uh, run the room in season two. Yeah. No, she's awesome. Uh, yeah. She's great. And then we're going Brandon... our thoughts. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. I was going to say Brandon Hackett came in for a bit to run and write. Uh, Niles again was in there for a bunch. Amanda Joy came in. Uh, Aj. Who else was there? Uh, Isabel Canaan, Luke and Adam. Just basically just like getting writers from the community, bringing them in, and then uh, how's that? How's that process go for you guys pitching sketches and for those other writers pitching sketches before you guys get before you guys start writing? Like I, I think we were figuring it out for the first time last year because uh, in the first season we had a handful of people come in, but last season we have a, we had a lot more people come in, and so we had to have discussions about. Um, what are people coming in for specifically? Like we had friends in the community who came in and they were just there to punch up, just hit us with the best jokes you can. And they were really fucking good at it. I was, I was like, well, you, guys should, you guys should get a show or something. You should do something. <laughs> <laughs> so they're like, do you want to sit where I'm sitting? You you, I'll, I'll go over there. You come <laughs> over here. Because uh, I, I, I wrote this thing and I still, I still didn't have punch punchline for it. Um, so yeah, so we had people come in for like very specific roles. Uh, and it's very interesting because, like, uh, there's so many. Like, I remember I felt uh, I don't know if the other boys were like this. Like, I, like, I wanted to put on as many people as I could. Like, there was I felt this energy where I was like, I'm in this position, and if I can put on as many people in the community that I love as I can, that would be awesome. But then uh, you also run into a problem with then like, oh, you know, it's still got to go through uh, the producers and also uh, say if they're auditioning through the network as well. It's like, their audition just wasn't good. Like, but I've seen them perform. You got to believe me, you know? But it's like, well, just the audition didn't go good. Someone else killed an audition and that's that's just how auditions work, you know? Um, but there was, yeah, there was, I, I felt like I, I wanted, I wanted as many people on as possible. So that's why I didn't get that part? <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, they, they just said, you know, they said like, there was another guy who was just, at, did a bit more eyebrow movement. <laughs> it's always the his eyebrow. name was Dwayne the Rock Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> Just the one eyebrow. <laughs> uh, so that so you guys have writers come in, uh, but you guys for this for the most part you guys are writing these sketches and you guys pitch them to each other first. Like, well, how does that how does that work? Do you, or do you guys secretly try and keep people keep your sketches from you? Is Frank um, like writing sketches? It, it, we I sit around right. a table first and yeah, we pitch our sketches and like just talk about the ideas and possible directions we can go. And then we'll break off and take a stab at writing those. And then we'll get to get back together, read it, maybe, you know, trade sketches or do more drafts, uh, which is nice. It feels like it. it's that's how we started. Like we literally sat around a table at my dad's condo and we're just in talking conversations and would write sketch through improv there. So it, it, it does feel, uh, you know, it's it's nice that that's stayed with us. Do you still bring your dad to like wherever you guys are writing now, so he can? <laughs> <laughs> he yeah, must well, have just yeah. the integrity of the table. <laughs> yeah. Like this is a good table. This one makes sure you guys are okay. And he's my ride. I I can't ride, so I mean. <laughs> <laughs> um, you guys. One of the things that you know, kids in the hall had is that they had a lot of live performances before they had their TV show. Uh, Baroness, same thing. Like. You guys only had like a, a couple of years before you guys really started doing this on TV. So you're kind of growing on TV before our eyes. You guys want to talk a little bit about, about that process uh, as writers and performers. Yeah, we're like the Mary Kay and Ashley Olsen of uh, <laughs> comedy. Um, <laughs> Me and Gula are Mary Kay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Ashley and Vance is Olsen. <laughs> um, yeah, go ahead. How's that, how's that finding your voice? Like, why? Because it's a different thing if you're finding your voice on stage like you said you just won't see those people again but when you find your voice on tv it's forever yeah I, I, it's, yeah. it's interesting uh and it, i think we all have like a fair amount of stage uh stage time like separate as a part of stand-ups like that's how we knew each other and improvisers and sketch like we knew each other through the community the, the community but like it's been interesting finding our like unified harmonious voice and i think that was what so much of uh the first season was is like what is our dynamic like and like just also just like truly like getting to know e each other as as humans and like 
being able to communicate and like I think the literally like the better we became friends I think the better our sketches became and it, uh, uh, like I think that was so integral I think one of our, uh, my favorite sketches from last season Tim's Jamaican came out uh from a conversation with me and Guled where just talking about our uh our experiences with you know uh the identity of being black because Guled grew up uh he was born born in, in Somali grew up in Kenya right yeah. and like uh uh, there, you know, uh, he was, you were a Somalian in Kenya first, like before a black person where I, growing up as, uh, you know, in Canada, you know, I, I learned I was black before I was Jamaican. Like I wrote, it's, I still learned I was Jamaican like soon, but I remember like, I can remember the conversation uh, of realizing I was Jamaican with my mom. Like, I'm, I don't know, I was maybe like five or six, but like, I remember I remember that being new information, like, and and that's that's where that sketch came from. I just told my son he's black. He's he's almost seven. <laughs> Rock <laughs> <his> world. <laughs> that's a good time to find out, you know. Yeah, I think so. He's growing. Um, speaking of black, like that sketch. That, let's talk real quick about that sketch, nigga. That's one of those sketches that I feel like okay, that's the only I can only see that I can't see that on Baroness. I can't see that on Kids in the Hall. I shouldn't. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about the, the process for that sketch. I was, uh, how'd that go down? Yeah, Franco and I came up with it. Oh, he's over here. Uh, uh he's, he's over here for me, actually. Yeah. Down here. Oh, wow. <laughs> Point to where Franco is in the chat. Um, uh, like and subscribe. <laughs> uh, yeah, that sketch, it, 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 it came out of Franco actually, like, came, I, uh, I, I host a like a uh, D DIY film festival in Toronto with uh, one of my fellow writers uh, or a couple of my fellow writers, Adam and Luke, called the Insomniac Film Festival. And uh, he came to an after party uh, there. And, uh, you know, uh, I, it, it, you know, it's a lot of young filmmakers, people in the arts, you know, quite understanding community. So, you know, people were singing along to songs, but when the N-word came on, you know, they would not say each other, they would censor themselves, you know, uh, you know, if they weren't black. And I, Franco was just saying how that stuck out to him because they know that that wasn't from his generation, like growing up, you know, kids didn't give a shit. Uh, so I think that that definitely came from it. And then also like hearing conversations from like No Name, the rapper who was, uh, you know, she talks a lot about, you know, the black struggle in her music and feeling weird about how, you know, her com her concerts were now predominantly white and like almost if she was like selling out uh, herself by like, you know, playing to these masses and stuff and, and dealing with that. So Franco wrote the nigga sketch. Interesting. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just yeah. came in for notes. I, I, I turned all the ERs into a soft A. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's, it's so funny. You know, it's so funny you you mentioned that because Franco, like you're 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 younger than me, um, but yeah, my generation too. People would just be they would just say it. And they'd they'd even like look at you when they said it too. Like, oh, <laughs> oh wow! Oh god! Like, <laughs> repeating these songs. Um, that's uh, that's that's the stuff I love to hear. Like it's just kind of like just like how you know, Law and Order gets all the credit for ripped from the headlines, but I think so much of sketch and so much of comedy is ripped from. from Real life ripped from the headlines, so that's amazing. We're going to be starting to open up to um, to uh, other people's questions soon. So they're in the uh, in the little Q and A section, the little Q and A area there. So if you have questions, just start popping them in there, and then we'll, we're going to get to those very, very, uh, very, very soon. Uh, oh, look at that! Here they here they come, guys. They 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 want to know more from you. <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> I feel like. With, with the tall boys and with what you guys are doing um, for so many different communities, um, there's just like a lot of people who are coming at you and like you you get people coming to you being like, oh, this is what you got to do, or oh, you got to do this, or oh, you got to do that. And you get a lot of family members saying like, write a sketch about me because I have. <laughs> I always have family members come to me and be like, oh, you should do a TV show about me, and I'm like, little do you know, I've already written it and I've sold it. <laughs> just don't want to keep going and <laughs> ask for money. You get a lot of that, a lot of that from uh, family members and from from friends just being like, "Oh, put me on." Certain, I've had certain family members, uh, but like they're the same personalities generally who are like, uh, it, "It's interesting." Like, I'm sure like some of the comments have talked about it. They come from a good place. They're like, "Hey," and and also the truth is, I struggle for ideas. So someone's like, "Hey, what about this?" Is an idea. I'm like, "Actually, that's not a bad idea." <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but in the moment, I'm like, I don't know if I could do it. Man, it so <laughs> I think I feel like I get a lot from my family where where like I'll just be in a room and it, like I hadn't said said something for a while. I'm like, oh, he's thinking about this. We're gonna see this in a sketch later. <laughs> We're gonna see this. And the thing is, like, that's the only thing I can make a sketch about is that they are constantly think they're going to be in a sketch like that i feel like they're never doing anything of note except <laughs> this is a sketch uh, yeah. this is the way i'm holding the cup <laughs> yeah the same thing happened uh not so much with my family members but a neighbor that i bumped into on a walk and uh is like a high school friend of mine but we live in the same neighborhood now and his dog was just throwing up <laughs> in the middle of our catch-up <laughs> conversation and we're like, oh, so, so do you see any? Do you see Jeremy still? And the dog was like, Ugh. and uh, he's like, oh, Frank is gonna write a sketch about this. And I was like, uh, maybe, maybe. <laughs> we don't like working with animals, but we'll work dog puppet probably. <laughs> so, question about it's just a, a follow up question: Has that happened where you've written a sketch about something that's happened in real life, and someone's come to you like, oh, you can put my life on TV like that? Like, have you got many of those uh, threatening emails from people? <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. Oh no. man. Yeah, no I one's need, clocked it. I've read I a lot about likeness that. likeness is, is purely coincidental. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How about says no one's clocked it? Like, so you've got some up there. You're waiting for someone to jump on you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I write about my roommates, and we watch the episodes together, and they still haven't put it together. So it's, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm doing good. <laughs> right? That's pretty slick. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's get to a, a question here. This one was emailed into us from Lloyd Davies in Calgary. Oh, so um, this is a, a, so SNL writers have been, this is a question, SNL writers have betrayed their Canadian comedy viewing by nearly copying sketches. Was the Issa Rae looking for Drake sketch a compliment or an insult? Uh, I mean, I, of... I, yeah, I don't, it, it was very different from our Drake sketch, yeah. uh, but it was a great sketch to see. Uh, and and one, and one of the writers, yeah, yeah. Tim saying is a friend who uh, they are from Toronto. Yeah, our friend oh, really? uh, Celeste Yim. She, we're all part of. Uh, me and Tim were part of this uh, Bob Curry Second City uh, Diversity Improv thing. What's it called? <laughs> There's a word for it. it. it Collective Improv. D I T no. for short. Show yeah. ensemble. We were an ensemble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah fellows that was it fellowship that fellowship, was a fancy yeah, yeah. Okay. lord of the rings Jared token uh, ensemble yeah. of the rings yeah <laughs> <laughs> does that does that when you see stuff like that does it make you feel like okay we got it we we're in the zeitgeist or does it make you feel like hey i know her <laughs> cool I, I think it feels pretty cool. I I, mean, I watch SNL uh, every Sunday morning because because I'm 30 now. So like, <laughs> <laughs> but but I'm I watch 30 it. 30 now? <laughs> you just say that to me? <laughs> I'm old man, because I'm 30 now. And I smoke yeah, indica. It, 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 it happens. <laughs> Uh, but uh, I w just watch. I see that uh, SNL is doing more musical sketches. And like they're having big musical numbers, and I'm like, hey, like we were doing that last year, and then they're like filling up. I think that's really cool. Like, I don't know if I, I wouldn't care if someone was stealing off us or getting SNL. Fine, <laughs> do it. That's cool. Like, we'll write more shit. Like, and also like this, there is like, uh, just you know, like the parallel thinking people talk about in comedy, where it's just like people can have the same ideas and never have like even mm -hmm. come into contact with each other like Celeste writing about Drake. If you live in Toronto, I mean, if you live anywhere in the world, you know how big Drake is, but especially if you live in Toronto, you know that Drake is our unofficial mayor. He's a spokesperson for the city. He runs a sanitation company and make sure that all the water is clean. Like he does a lot of stuff here, you know? So, so that's, uh, it makes sense that Celeste would write about it. Uh, this question is from Andre Gress. Um, let's see which one of these. He had, he had like 12 questions. I'm only gonna, I'm gonna ask one of them. You know, uh, can you combine all, a couple of them and we'll try to uh, things, figure it out? <laughs> mega question. Uh, no, because it'll be, you'll have, you'll have, then we'll, we'll be on his questions for a long time. This is a good one. I think, what's your most memorable moment in your career as a writer? That's a nice, that's a nice sweet little question. What do you guys, oh. what's that moment for you guys? You're kind of like, oh, this was a good day. I mean, <laughs> still, I, I, I think uh, one of our favorite sketches, our PSA sketch that we wrote on the first day of, 
we ever became a troop oh, and, yeah. and like hung out all together for a collective time and it was just it like flowed out of us like so effortless effortlessly and like uh was a great day uh yeah i i'll always remember that where because yeah. franco told me that was his worst day <laughs> so rough. No, I was that's afraid of the so success. Good. Yeah, <laughs> I wanted to fail. <laughs> what about the rest of you guys? You guys have uh, you guys have that day it's locked in your brain, or is it one of those things where you're still waiting for it? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm sure there's been a lot of like really good moments that I have just forgotten about. Like I know the feeling like when you write a sketch and then you crack it and it's getting like big laughs around the table. That's like really cool because it's like such a different format than doing it on stage. So getting people who are sitting uh, in a circle and like they've been reading so many funny things to still laugh at your ideas. Like, all right, this is nice. I like this. Yeah, I can't think of a specific moment uh, where it feels like this is the most memorable moment, but I I guess the first thing that comes to my mind is when uh, uh, the children's book revealed started like trending and doing very well on Twitter and I think it's doing very well on TikTok now but because of just like some of the stuff we're talking about where it just doesn't feel too preachy and we're like kind of slipping in ideas uh that always feels like a lot of fun and it feels like oh man we pulled it off they don't even know (laughs) they're thinking right now they got no idea (laughs) these idiots are learning for the runs those dummies (laughs) they came to laugh and we indoctrinated them (laughs) yeah i like to approach comedy like a a cool substitute teacher (laughs) you should approach everything in life like that Good, good way to go i open up final draft like hey hey world let's rap (laughs) <laughs> you just put on a video and just yeah. walk out everyone in the office is like why is he sitting on a chair backwards <laughs> it's hard to type that way yeah. it's a swivel chair <laughs> <laughs> so uncomfortable you really flexible uh, this question is from taylor anisette hey taylor uh you kind of talked a little bit about this but is the you can confirm is the rest of your team for tall boys, also diverse, and if no, has it been a challenge? We kind of talked a little bit about that, but you guys can hit on. Yeah, that. yeah. I mean, outside of us, like the people we bring into the room are diverse, but like uh, the other behind the scenes, like a uh, production-wise, um, the keys for different departments are not. It's something that we're still trying to figure out because, like, I don't know. There's a feeling. I, I mean, I feel like it's like. Uh, they just aren't enough people have been have been given opportunities so it's like a historical thing and like at times like i feel like we're fighting two battles which is like we want to make the change now but there's so much historical like people who look like us haven't been brought into these spaces mm-hmm. when when they should have been and so now it's like playing catch up and then going against unions who are also like pushing back for union reasons but also like at times it feels like like they're uh, at least my feeling is like it's like oh, do you understand we're trying to change history here we're not trying to change the rules <laughs> we're trying to change history you know like just let people who look like us do this job yeah more of that we have to you know we're just going to keep on pushing until we have more representation in all facets of this industry and to keep keep on going speaking of which this question comes from jennifer irons who is uh doing exactly what you're talking about right now She's got a great question here. What's the end goal for you for? What's your dream achievement? You become one person. <laughs> <laughs> one mega tall Voltron like. Yeah, and yeah. it's like with one swipe we're decimating towns. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good question because it's one of those things where I was talking to you guys. And I only, it's funny because like you know, these troops, these Canadian sketch troops. Eventually, you 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 get to a place where you guys are like you know you're very well known in the industry in Canada then. You guys kind of go off and do amazing things. And then we kind of point to that person like, I remember when they were in the tall boys, they're Canadian. We love them. Yeah. Now, they do amazing things. Like what, what's, what's that, what's that, what, what's that big dream for you guys? Dance started a cult in South America. It used to be in tall boys. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, like, Speak it into existence. Tell us what I, you want. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I mean I, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I, I want to keep doing this and like, just, do it bigger and better like I, I would love like if yeah like like if the future tall boy shows 
have the same budget as SNL, you know, like just that's that's what I want. Personally, I'd, I, you know, I'd like to go work in the States sometime, but like bigger dream is like big, more money, put more money to this, get more people that look like us and give them a shit ton of money to do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My dream is to make more money. Uh, no, just kidding. Um, <laughs> I think, yeah, I think like, you know, the tall boys is great because with sketches we get to tell, we kind of like get to, uh, you know, push out um, little moments of point of view and comedy at the same time but i think all of us love tv and film and storytelling and i think at some like i feel like we all four of us have a great movie idea where all four of us are in it and then at some point i feel like we are all capable of uh helping uh, a lot of our friends and other people in our community uh tell their stories um and so yeah i mean for me i just love the idea of storytelling and connecting with people uh, and yeah, I want to be able to have a larger platform where I could tell a lot of stories that need to be told, uh, that deserve light of day, uh, because we, me and Gula were just talking about this, about, uh, this other idea that we had and we're like, oh man, like, like a lot of people are saying right now, uh, we we heard rumors that like people are going to their agents and a lot of people are bringing up Rami a lot or Rami. Yeah, correct me yeah. if I'm wrong. Uh, and uh, people was like, oh, well, you know, they're going to compare it to Rami. Like anything, you know, anything brown, people are going to compare it to Rami. Yeah. Where it's like, man, you know, like, you know, Ryan Gosling and Edward Norton both played neo Nazis. And... <laughs> And Ryan Gosling like, and Ryan Reynolds are the same was a person. Yeah. <laughs> and all, yeah, also Green Lantern is a neo Nazi. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no those rumors, but yeah, I mean, I, I just feel yeah. like like the the I think like recognizing even being in this moment, and I think like the previous question was like, was there a challenge? Like, I think also internally it was like really challenging to to get over your own imposter. Like for me personally, to get over this imposter syndrome and like kind of. Uh, find the confidence to be like oh this is a point of view that is a value and there's a lot of great stories that uh need to be told and i, I can name a bunch of friends where i'm like man this guy should have a show this is great um so to be in that position at some point uh, would be amazing as well yeah i think about it like how you know lauren michaels got to start on a comedy show on cbc and i think we could become lauren michaels that's, that's the one person I want us all to form into. Yeah, we all want to be Michael. Lauren Michaels before he changed his name. <laughs> Sounds like there's a story there. Um, there's so many. There's so many questions. We're gonna try and get. We're gonna try and get to as many as possible. Okay. Um, Marie France Terio. Did I say that right? Did it sound French when I said that? Guys, we it did. I mean, at least to me. But French speakers I, sound off in the comments. Trivia. Yeah. So good at this. Uh, I'd love to know what everyone's favorite and least favorite air sketches have been. I don't want to know about your favorite sketch. Tell me real quick, uh, what's a sketch you wish you could you could you could redo? Mm. Yeah, mm. that's right. Yeah, hard hitting mm. shit, make you think. Off the like, the first thought that comes to mind uh, is still the children's book revealed. There's a, a joke that got cut out, and I wish I really pushed for it. Uh, it's a point where uh, when we see like Tim is listing up a, a bunch of different sketches uh, different books where it's like uh, uh, it's like I forget it was like something Shamika's web and then the third one is consent Dracula and there was a tag before where it was like uh, just because you're invited in doesn't mean you could do whatever you want Ty and uh, <laughs> I wish we kept that line I really wish oh, <laughs> I'm glad I heard it here though yeah. I'm glad I heard it here uh, what about you guys what about the rest of you guys Franco was brave he spoke no, up. I like this is tapping into my uh, my own self esteem and posture issues, which is like it feels like a lot of stuff I could redo, you know. Yeah. Uh, so like picking a sketch is like, uh, if I had to maybe like um, the Black Panther one from season one, where like I feel like there was an, a kernel of idea that became a sketch, but I wish I could have. I still don't quite know what I was trying to say with that sketch, and I wish I'd go back and. Uh, just either not put it in or just give it more time to figure out what that idea is. Yeah. Oh, and I got another one, but I'll wait for it. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> and here's another thing. 
Uh, do we have to redo one of our sketches? Can I redo someone else's? Yeah, you have to. Do <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I want to do redo uh, Dear Sister uh, from SNL. <laughs> I don't know. Without the music. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Too distracted. Um, I really have to think. Uh, I feel like the, yeah. Uh, yeah, I got to think. Uh, I mean, I, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm kind of happy with most of the stuff we put out i love it uh, yeah i gotta think about one i'd want i don't know <laughs> I, I feel it in the moment or like while i'm watching it like just in like uh this past one i watched emo and i was just like oh man like i wish i would have i could have like just form for like took more time and care with that character really sat with it and figured out like who he was <laughs> and like well, I, don't, I don't mean to sound like a, an actor but uh <laughs> well, just yeah. like no, this is inside the actor studio um I had a buddy message me and he was just like, man, this sketch screams Bruce McCullough. And I was just like, oh, no, I want to be my own man, right? <laughs> like, I want to be my own, like, I want to be Vance the Comedian, not little native Bruce McCullough. <laughs> you're not little, dude. Don't say that. You're, you're not, not little. You're not little at all. He's not compared to him. <laughs> but, um, you, you know, like, um, uh, but like thinking about it and sitting with it and stuff like that, it's like, uh, I spoke with him more and he was just like, Man, uh, so like I grew up on Kids in the Hall, and I love Kids in the Hall, and um, I'm a hardcore fan. That really inspired me. So that was really cool to see. I hope I didn't slight you in any way like that. And that like was like really like yeah, sure. Like not all my instincts are going to be correct, but there is definitely uh, there can be a very good outcome. And like just having Kids in the Hall fans smile and be like, oh, that reminds me of a Bruce McCall character. I mean, that's that's a good thing to take away from it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I think I found the sketch I'd like to redo. We, in first season, we did a sketch, Airplane Bathroom, but uh, that sketch only went in because there was another bathroom sketch I wrote that we were like, we can't do both. And I, you know, I, I would have loved to see the the other bathroom sketch that's about uh, taking food to the bathroom. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Cutting out the um, Wait, oh, the, I just want oh, to say the, ahead, one, the other thing because it's uh, it's been on my mind since uh, a while because day and monologue with the in season one I have a, a monologue where I'm on a date with a white woman and I'm being fetishized and references to K-pop and stuff like that mm -hmm. um, and I remember like uh, really uh, wrestling with like oh man what would have like what does it mean if she gets up first and I leave and like all those other things and I really wish the ending was that uh, I was the one that got up from the table and walked away and then jumped into like a just a pool of other Asian dudes that were <laughs> carrying me out. Uh, and so because <laughs> then at the end, because at the end of that, it would have been like we both like not like in terms of like the power dynamic of it. Yeah. Anyways, you watch it. Ask me. I'll follow up. Let you know. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was a great question. Uh, this is not a question. This is I don't have a question, but I wanted to say I am so thrilled the show is on. You all are hitting on such relevant topics. Keep doing what you're doing, and thanks for making it funny, because that opens up a gateway for more serious conversations. Two thumbs up. Oh, that's great. That's cool. yeah, really sweet. Yeah. Two thumbs back. Shut back up. at you. <laughs> no, <laughs> come on. No, oh, you know what's funny? Boy. Okay, I'm only, I'm, only, I'm only saying this because okay, Tracy Stapleton, my cousin, Seed's older sister. Whoa. And you guys all know Seed. Oh, yeah, yeah. Nice. love Seed. Seed's Whoa, great. my God. Look at that. Look at family <laughs> Full circle. Uh, I'm going to jump to the chat here for a quick question. I'm going to there's a lot of questions. I'm going to try and get as many to, to as many of them as yeah, possible. Yeah, absolutely. Um, here, this one's from Brent Collins. It's people who write comedy. Do you ever feel the pressure to always be funny and always be on, not just in professional, <laughs> settings, social settings as well? What are you a, talking about? Uh, oh. I'm sorry, we wrote a sketch. This is who I am. Oh, we did. Yeah. Oh, yes, oh, we yeah, did. I yeah, that was one of our first sketches that we wrote about a oh, guy yeah. who was always on. And we're like, okay, take it easy. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what was it called? It was, it was called Punch Up Comic, is what it was called, I think. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. 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 I would just uh, talk about like, uh, oh, my mom's in the hospital. Like, oh, did she ride a horse like that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't do it. I'm not doing too much. <laughs> <laughs> and I, at the end of the sketch, I do it. I tell a very heartfelt thing because the guys get so mad at me. And then uh, after the heartfelt thing, I pull out a mic from the side. I'm like, anyways, my next joke is going. Like, I'm moving on. <laughs> we got to bring that back. That was a hit. Yeah. That was yeah, so that was funny. Yeah. Do you? I feel like that's a that's a one of those things where it feels like it's um. It's also an age thing. The older you, I'm an old, as an old 43 year old man, I could tell you, like, I was very much like that when I was in like my 20s and 30s. But then after a while, you just you start giving less fucks, and you're just kind of like, ah, eh, 
This is who I am. Is what this is what it is. Deal with it. Mm. So it's like you feel like as you've as you've gotten older, you've kind of like figured out ways to kind of mellow a little more in social situations. I feel like as someone with ADD, I I feel like I I try often not to be funny because I think my mind is always like sidetracking, where it's like, oh, I could. I can do that. And I feel like I derail a lot of conversations. So I feel like, yeah, I, I, I feel, I don't feel pressure to be on. Like I I'm, I'm constantly like, I'm not going to say that joke. That, that won't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. Yeah, man. I'm like the opposite. I'm like so antisocial. I like sink into my own body. I'm like, okay, if I'm too quiet, then I don't have to, this is the reference point. I don't have to contribute. <laughs> <laughs> they can't expect anything from this quiet he guy. He didn't talk the whole time, so. <laughs> yeah, talking would be like, oh my God. They're like, they start clapping. They're like, yeah. It's cool, yeah. Maggie Simpson. I uh, yeah, I'd... I just, uh... oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I just real short. Yeah, I try to like just uh, let it all flow from the heart, you know, just uh, <laughs> try not to think too much about what I'm saying. And then uh, apologize after. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I love that. I, it's I don't know. It's it's something I never thought about uh, how funny I was being in conversations till I got into comedy. Because outside of comedy, it's like I was making jokes with friends and our family, and they laughed and they're like, "You funny." And I felt like I was like I was like oh, I felt like that was like such a high compliment. Then when I got into comedy, I saw some people who were I think like so much funnier than me conversationally. So at times it feels like I'm like I don't want to. I don't want this to be a competition. I want us to talk about anything <laughs> yeah. else. And I've gone to enough comic parties where we're doing bits that by the time I leave the conversation, I am tired. Like yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, like I'm exhausted. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, I did so many characters. And then like, what was that thing we talked about the bottle cap? I was like, oh my god, I just don't want to. <laughs> and, and I go into another circle. We do more bits. I'm like, what is happening? This whole yeah. night's bits. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to be that loser that uh, is sincere. Yeah, <laughs> the worst thing you can be. It's sincere. You just gotta be doing bits nonstop. It's horrifying. <laughs> uh, okay, we got a good question here. So Nat, Natalia Escobar. Hey, Natalia. She wants to know how you guys connect the first and last sketch of the, the episodes. It feels very natural, not like you were forced to write the first and sketch on, on, with the last one. Do you guys write? Are you guys writing these? Um, when you're writing all these sketches, are you just writing a bunch of sketches and putting them together at the end, or do you? already have like you guys like this is episode one this is episode two this is episode three and you already know how it's going to start and finish we we do structure them in episodes but it they really do jumble by the time it gets to the edit because and i think they can with sketches but we do think about like through lines or like jokes that sketches that could possibly like just you know touch each other for lack of a better word uh, and like sometimes, like, we'll, we'll, uh, <laughs> too hot to see me. <laughs> uh, and, but then sometimes, you know, we'll just spend time just thinking about what what are jokes that could you know cross over from this sketch to that, and like just brainstorm a bunch, and then even like maybe shoot a couple and see which one work and which doesn't. Yeah, and sometimes like the apartment scenes are kind of like natural three parters that we kind of are able to. Yeah, separate and have a natural through line but other sketches yeah usually at, when we there we just write sketches non-stop they get put together and then sometimes when there's no uh connective tissue we have to engineer one mm -hmm. okay so it's a bit it's uh, a bit luck some some very deliberate i'll take it this is, what you, <laughs> this is what it is writing tv this is a good question from when uh from uh sadie Fay. When you went from performing with little to no budget to suddenly having a budget for a TV show, what was important? What was important to you that you had that you focus money on? Oh where shoot! Do to, where do you want to put them dollars? Is uh, it in uh, was it in mustaches for Tim? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like I think all of it for me was like so new, so I, I had no idea, like even what money goes to on TV and. Like what we were capable of doing so for me i was just like everything was just like so neat i was like oh sweet i get to wear brand new clothes uh these two scenes i'm like sick i love this is not the life i'm used to living so cool <laughs> that it, that did become like a conversation early on where like yeah because we were just uh, at the fair first season we we're just truly writing oh, what we thought was funny and just anything and i remember they had to like pull us aside there's like a helicopter we wrote in one sketch and we're like <laughs> all right sure i mean if we really need a helicopter we could do it but you know you might have to wear the same outfit for a couple of episodes and like, that was like understanding the, first, the weight yeah yeah the first episode was about vans having a cult or 
no, it was okay. about me having a cult, Vance having a diary, and then it ends with <laughs> SWAT teams breaking into a warehouse and there's like helicopters and ladders <laughs> descending <laughs> through the roof. We were just heightening. I was like, what's the highest thing we can go? Helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> We thought rocket ship would be too unbelievable. Yeah, it wouldn't work. <laughs> and you just put it in the sound design. You can you can have a <laughs> sound design. You I mean, we ended that. up did doing that with the yeah, sound sure, helicopter. For our own sketch, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is how you make TV for Canada. <laughs> Look at that helicopter over there. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful and expensive looking. <laughs> you guys wouldn't believe the helicopter I'm looking at right now. Cameraman, turn around, turn around. You're missing. <laughs> Every Canadian drum. <laughs> uh, uh, da, 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 da. Oh, Tyra Sweet has a question. Um, what is something you wouldn't have been able to do on stage that you were really excited to do on the show? I guess I, that's the thing where I feel like you can almost do anything on stage. Like th I, I, that was one thing. I, I mean, personally, I, I had to deal with where like stage has such cartoon logic and because of willing suspension of disbelief i think it goes back to the helicopter thing like you can do but i mean you i guess you can do anything on, uh, on i guess the edit i guess like having a hard cut i i think that's the biggest like and sight gags were two things i had to learn to adapt like writing for on tv versus stage I uh think yeah I feel like uh, that's the one that was just on recently, the Dirty Roommates one, where no one's doing the dishes. That moment where everyone's smashing the plates, I don't think you can do that on stage because there's something about the audience. It feels like once you break something for real in front of an audience, it, it's like scary for people. It's, yeah. It seems real. Yeah. It's like, They're what? just thinking guys, about the glass the whole these time. These guys were going mm -hmm. bang, bang, pow, pow, but this is uh, <laughs> my parents. Uh, whereas like, I think on uh, TV, it, there's like a a screen of separation that makes it like, oh, okay, they could do whatever they want, but I'm safe. The only danger is watching. <laughs> mm -hmm. The uh, I have a question for Lana, who's our uh, communications director. Lana, d should I have should I have stopped six minutes ago, or can I? Keep, <laughs> no, can keep I keep going. Um, as long as you guys want to talk, probably another ten minutes. But looking at the questions, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's go. Let's yeah, go. we're in. All right, let's go. Uh. Oh this, is, oh, this is a good question. Can you, from Christopher Krasinski, uh, can you describe Any to John? What? Any relation to no. John, the John Krasinski? No, it's spelled slightly different. Mm -hmm. Krasinski? I, Christopher, I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name. Can you describe the process and the hurdles of getting the series over the line and greenlit? Was there a pivotal moment, make or break? Was there a pivotal make or break moment? Uh, so yeah, how, when did you guys, what did you guys have to do to get your series greenlit to series? We uh, you have to do things too. <laughs> we, we wrote we like wrote a bunch of sketches and then we built two episodes and we presented those two episodes to um, to CBC uh, to three upper ups and then we ended up having a little show at CBC in a in a room at a long table and we had a we had a fellow I know come that room in well and, yeah Nick yeah Nick. yeah yeah <laughs> we had Nick come in from Bad Dog and he did uh, he did our little audio and played like the music, the music cues and stuff, the, the feel that we wanted for the show. And we just did a read through. And then- uh, Kirsten Rasmussen was there too. Yes, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, she was. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it was the biggest table lettuce. I've ever seen. Truly. Yeah. They gave that us free waters, it was crazy. It's yeah. a big table, that table. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have to sit, the trick for that table is you gotta sit, don't sit on the long ends, cause it'll just, it's too much. You gotta sit mm. like on the, make it the distance smaller between you two guys. That's. Oh, that's smart. <laughs> I see. That's an, that's an experienced person. Yeah, wow. yeah, we were yeah. at separate ends just shouting at each other. <laughs> that was yeah. good. We used the intercom at some point. It was a real Batman. Thank Tim Burns Batman. So you guys had yeah, to write two episodes and then go in and kind of read them. And then after that, it was like, okay, let's let's try let's try um, a season. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they, they, yeah, they greenlit us in the room. So that was pretty fucking insane. Yeah. Now, is it one of those things where you wouldn't let them out until you were greenlit? Or <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it's like, no, this is great. <laughs> For legal reasons, but it's still we can't talk about what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Just say we're not allowed at that table anymore. <laughs> uh, oh, there was a question here I wanted to ask. That's from Maxine Grossman. What's it like to laugh like Seth Rogen? Uh, who's that? Who, who is, is that me? Is that me? Is that me? Who is that? 
I feel like it's. I can't is tell who's laughing. It's, is it for, it's probably Franco. Well, everyone, everyone, do a laugh. Everyone, go around, do a laugh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> no, it's a, hold on. <laughs> it's so uh. hard. I feel like I'm doing the laugh. That's weird. Do, like if I, if I was <laughs> nice. on a on a date and I'm trying to press, I'm like, <laughs> you know, it's a very pleasing laugh. You know, <laughs> in hearing someone laugh like that, I can't tell which one of you it is though. Maxine, do you know who it is? She'll put in the chat. If you're still here, Max. Yeah, gonna... put in the chat. Let us know. This might split the group up. She doesn't know either. I think maybe it's Tim. Tim. I think maybe maybe it's Tim. Oh, Tim. Maybe it's Tim. No. Tim laughs like JC. Though. Tim laughs like JC. Though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's Tim. Uh, everyone, ag everyone agrees it's Tim. It's your Jamaican. You're the Jamaican Seth Rogen now. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is you. Look at you. Uh, no, I, no, I can't laugh. I feel weird. Flash a Buddha light. Questions. Um, that's not a question. That's just a nice thing to say. Embrace okay. it, <laughs> Do you? Oh, this is the. This is. Oh, you know what? You guys have answered that one before. Do, 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 can I, maybe I can answer it better the second time. Let's go for Natalie. Let's the Natalie Young Lai, who is the the queen of uh, BIPOC team. Hey, what up, Natalie? Yeah. Hey. Do any of you want to be head writers, showrunners of your own show? Are you being given opportunities to build those skills by season three? Oh, Natalie, yeah. that, is it a goal for you guys to to do that? I I, I say yeah, absolutely, absolutely, yeah, definitely, definitely. definitely. Like, yeah, it's it's something that we're we're like we have picked up so far. Some like I mean. It's happened by just doing the show not two seasons that we picked up uh, a bunch of skills, but now we want to try for this third season to actively get into different roles um, so that like, yeah, we, we have not just like through, is it osmosis? Is that what it is? When like, yeah, yeah, that's it goes from high pressure thing. to low pressure, just <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. not just through, awesome. we want to actively like, we want to be like, yeah, put us in these roles. Like we want to be part of these meetings and learn more so that, yeah, we can do our own shows as well. Uh, yeah. That's great, and I'm happy to help with any of that. Anytime you guys need advice about anything, uh, I got you. Is that for everybody or just us? That's for, that, well, that's for, there's another fifty it's for you guys, especially, and also for everybody. I did. I've done this thing with BIPOC TV and film where I've kind of had like um, I've been trying to help people be showrunners and stuff. But that's that's nice. just that's amazing. I'm, I'm yeah. here. Yeah, I love that. Um, it's amazing. Lewis Taylor, who is a fantastic human being, wants to know what your process is around turning heavily political issues from your specific communities into a group created sketch. Do you guys ever do you guys, how does that work when you guys, so like you guys come to the group, like, oh, this is a topic I really want to hit. Uh, I'm a, you guys seem very supportive of each other. Um, mm. So how does that work when someone comes to, to the, the group with uh, something to, to talk about? Uh, I mean, yeah, I guess it, it's some, we just, talk about it or yeah no, i'm trying to think of maybe a specific example sorry uh like i know that like uh like this is one of our sketches from the first season but it was a stage sketch uh the pullover where we had a lot of talks about that one um we did it in tim's dad's condo's uh, um little rehearsal space around the table um and we did it like so many times for ourselves and i remember like there there are a lot of sketches that made me viscerally like I felt uncomfortable. I was like, because like, initially, I think I got shot in some of the first iterations, and I remember just feeling like, like, uh, like I wanted to cry because I'm like, this is a very real thing that is already happening, and like I don't, I couldn't quite, like it didn't feel right doing it in that scene, but eventually after a while we figured out like what became the 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 stage and then the TV version of that. So I don't know. We we try to like just have conversations about it. Yeah, sometimes I think with uh, like certain topics too, uh, sometimes you try to uh, convey the feeling more than what the angle is. And because sometimes when you're trying to like, well, how am I, what am I saying specifically about this? And how am I expressing this in this particular way? It's, it could be really challenging and you can really get in your head, and really anxious about it. Uh, but if you can figure out how you feel about it and you can convey the feeling sometimes that will do all the explanation that the sketch requires. Uh, and I think the other thing too, is like a lot of times with most sketches, uh, we all kind of take a pass at everything, you know, even like usually one person will write the first draft. And then, you know, if we can't really break it 
by the second or third someone else will take it on and then at some point we go the uh, sketches the episodes get put together and then we all sit around at the table and we go through the entire script and we're like okay which which points uh parts do we want to punch up and change and which parts stick out for us um and, and usually you know at that point it's like everyone's uh kind of yeah had their fingerprints on the sketch uh, and and then at that point it's like once we go shooting it's even then it's like sometimes you're sitting in costume with a mustache on thinking man what am I doing is this the right <laughs> thing and then someone's like I, th- I like it and you're like all right that's enough for me let's go <laughs> we have some hype men on the show yeah. <laughs> uh, I have a question here from um, Wes Robertson where is that question here we go. It's funny because Wes is someone I've been in sketch groups with. Uh, and I know the answer from me and Wes, but let's see what you guys say. How do you push each other comedically and keep each other, each uh, writer out of their own tropes? Mm. 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 Uh, I feel like we're also That's... learning our tropes, I think, that because I, 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 we're kind of new, but uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, maybe we uh, encourage one another to embrace their tropes instead of be so scared and adverse to it. Like, I mean, we're all young writers. Frank goes on the board, but I don't give a fuck. Here we go. So, uh, <laughs> 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 he's, he's like, he's like no, I don't know about that. But, uh, I don't know, but uh, but, but like uh, we all have, we all write differently. You know, we're all uh, we're all young writers and. Uh, I know I like I go towards more darker stuff. I love that style, sense of humor, uh, and give me death and give me war and all that <laughs> stuff. But um, like uh, we just, uh, I think we're helping. Why don't we just help each other to embrace that stuff and just uh, and encourage? <laughs> What, yeah sorry i think what i'm going for is like but, someone said something negative <laughs> hey we should do the positive huh have you thought about that <laughs> i think it's called but toxic I, I think positivity you do, but i haven't figured it out <laughs> I, you do have a point also where it's like yeah maybe we do have our own tropes but i think because we're so collaborative you know it's mixing that up you know you know uh you know vance is all about the dark death throw a little bit of tim wordplay in there you know like <laughs> yeah. it's, it's just getting the different mix you know every time uh okay. yeah i think like the like we're yeah, I think we're incredibly supportive of each other, and I think I'll like for me personally. Like, I always like want to like keep up with everyone because I think everyone's super super funny, uh, and I I think there's always that fear of like, man, I might be the weakest link, and that's like <laughs> yeah. what motivates me. It's not like everyone's like, Frank, you, bro, you gotta step it up. It's more like um, <laughs> it's more like, man, I I want to be here. I want to be here for everyone. I want uh, you know make sure I, I'm pulling my weight. All right, I got two more questions. This one is a very important question from uh, a very important person. Tim, have you thought about giving your brother a cameo? This is from Cobra. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, no comment. What do you mean no? Oh, wow. Cobra's not gonna, I'm gonna ask the other question that Coburn had because uh, that was also a good question. Do you think writing for comedy makes it easier to write for drama? Oh. Uh, uh, is that, a question or yeah that's, that's, a question. A, that's a question from a uh tip tv that's from and blair <laughs> i don't know yeah i mean like i'm sure we have like we have like dramatic elements in some of our sketches you know uh like real life like i mean even children's book reveal that could be a very real life conversation but then we just find like the silly twist to it um i think we could i mean just yeah let us write for what's it days of our lives uh <laughs> Oh, what's a drama? Uh, damn, I'm thinking drama. Uh, <laughs> this, is this is us. Let us write for this is us. This is us. If you're watching this, let us write for you. Uh, we'll send you. We'll send you a script and Heartland. There we go. We'll write from Heartland. Uh, you see, you're right. Cobert, you're right, Coburn. I don't know. Yeah. It's now for our funnier, is, is Coburn funny or a Tim funny? I don't know. Coburn's got the <laughs> oh, oh, he's taller. He's taller, but. Uh... <laughs> I'll tell you, Cobra. I think the line between comedy and and the and the line between laughter and tears is a very thin line. And if you can do comedy, you can do drama. It's just a matter of getting more experienced to the place where you you know how to tug those emotions the right way to get the response you want. That's yeah. that's experience. That's from an old comedy. <laughs> All right, this is gonna be the last question. Comedy is um, drama is just slower comedy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that that thing with like 
you know, comedy is just tragedy plus time. Very real. It's very real. Um, and I've had so much time. Comedy, dramedy. Drama is uh, tragedy minus time. <laughs> <laughs> math joke. <laughs> so much math in this show. <laughs> I love it. All right, this will be the last question. This is from uh, Phil Sonali. Have you thought about guest stars? If so, who is your dream guest? Who do you guys? Who would you guys love to get on the show Ooh. in season three? We can send this to them, and then maybe we can make it happen. Manifest it. I, mean, I think. I think we have to meet the real boys to men. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. That would be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. All four, or are you are you okay with just the three of them? Uh, well, the, the fourth one can be a little bit of a distance because we don't want to start any drama or anything like that. Yeah, but all four of them, yes. <laughs> Yeah, it would be uh, similar to that uh, Fresh Prince plot where we uh, promised that uh, we would get Nikki <laughs> voice him <laughs> to sing at our uh, nephew's uh, christening, and then they just show up <laughs> at the end. You could just take that episode and just yeah, yeah. that's full twenty. <laughs> you know what? I think I will. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone else? You guys are. I mean, you're not going to get voice to man. They can't cross the border. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah. Too many oh, crimes or felons. Um, oh, that's no. not I mean, we like, had like, I mean, that true. Like, no, it's not true. Like, anytime <laughs> we can get some, like, first season, we had like Peter Mansrich came on for a little bit. So, like, anytime, like, I said who... celebrities. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, Colin oh! Mockery was already on. <laughs> Take that, Peter Mansrich. <laughs> oh, God. You're really, you're, you're, CBC's going to call us after this. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, the National is an institution. <laughs> I know. They get probably have bigger ratings than we do, you know. <laughs> Colin Mockery someone says. It's yeah, he's, he was on, he, you'll see him. He's on the second season. Like, it was really, really awesome. Um, he's, a, he's a national treasure, absolutely. I think just the Oh, coolest. dude, Justin Bieber, man. Honestly, Justin yeah, Bieber came on the show. <laughs> he's, he's not like he's got some comedic chops, man. Like, he can act, you know? Mm -hmm. I would I love to go on a tandem bike ride with Drake. That would yeah, be we'll nice. That would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll, we'll manifest. We'll make it happen. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's, uh, how, how are you guys feeling? Do you guys have any questions for the people who are watching? We probably should. Probably questions should. For, for, for them <laughs> specifically? Yeah. Uh, specifically um, for any people. You're allowed to ask one question back to every single person that asks you a question. All right, where do you get off? And who the <laughs> hell? <laughs> and I have a follow-up. How dare you? <laughs> and I'd like to add, where's your head at? Where's your head at? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, uh, did you, uh, oh, I, everyone, all 55 of you, uh, did you plan, when quarantine started, did you plan on writing something, starting and finishing it? Or did you not complete it? <laughs> oh. oh, that's a good question for all of you. Please put your answers in the chat. Um, and in the meantime, while they're writing things that we'll never read, I yeah, will- start it still going nice. I'll, I'll start this outro. Okay, so uh, uh, guys, first of all, thank you very much. This has been great. You've been watching Writers Talking TV presented by the Writers Guild of Canada. This edition will also be posted to the WGC channel youtube.com slash user slash writers guild of canada in the next few days uh so thanks to you guys thanks to tonight's panel pan 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 panelists is that what i just read <laughs> guys i'm gonna <laughs> learn words soon thanks to tonight's panelists uh good yes. advance tim franco uh you guys were awesome thank you very much for being so amazing and so candid and so uh just open and warm and just being a, a, a breath of fresh air in the canadian tv landscape i really do honestly appreciate you guys um yeah My, i'm anthony q farrell thank you uh have a great night keep writing that musical all right thanks guys <laughs> <laughs> thank you thanks anthony no thank you thank you <laughs>